Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to do a static structural analysis on this lifting bracket here. This bracket here has two components. One is this lifting plate and one is this base plate here. This base plate has four holes which we are going to fix in space. Now, instead of creating a solid weld between these two plates, what we are going to actually do is we are going to mesh it as one complete shell pair. So shell pairs are basically a, an idealized way of representing solid bodies which are thin in nature. So let's get started. We go to applications and simulate. Before I show how a shell pair looks, let me just go to refine model tab and do a regular mesh. Okay, go to auto gem and create. So in the previous video, you would have seen this uh, technique we used for different analysis. So this is a solid mesh and it has a three dimensional uh, uh, representation to the mesh. So I'm going to close out of this. So within this refined model tab, we have something called shell pair. If we go to the drop down of the shell pair, there is an option to detect shell pairs. Since these two are five millimeter thick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sub assembly from the model tray and click five and start. So as you see, as I entered start, it has created several shell pairs for me. So we have two shell pairs, which are the mid-surface representation of these solid bodies. In order to look at the shell pairs, we should go to review geometry and apply. So we'll see a mid-surface. So the pink color lines we see here are bonded connections. So what Creo is trying to tell us is by default, these two plates are bonded to each other and there is no metal in between. That's why we see a gap here. So now we have to bridge that gap using some kind of a weld. For that, I'm going to utilize weld command on connections. If I go to the drop down and click weld, I have something called end weld. So it will ask for me two surfaces. First, I'm going to select the thin surface, which we are going to extend against the larger surface. So I query select by right clicking. It will show me the bottom surface. I left click on this and I select my surface to which it's going to be extended to. So I'll select the larger surface, click OK. Now, if I go to review geometry again and click apply, as you see, it is, the gap is bridged now. So just to see a differentiation, I'm going to suppress this weld for a second. And then we do a review geometry. You can clearly see a gap right which, between these two plates. But if I enable my weld, the gap will be bridged. So now if I hit my auto gem and create, it will give me triangular and quadrilateral elements instead of uh, tetrahedral elements. So this is a 2D mesh. When I look at it from the front view, it has a thin element created at the middle for both of these plates. So that represents mid-surface meshing. Now that we have created builds, it is time for us to create our boundary conditions. So we go to home tab and click on displacement. Since this is a shell pair, that's a 2D element. We're not going to select the surface instead of that. We'll select the edges. Go to drop down edges. Select all these edges holding control. So now we are going to arrest all these holes in six degrees of freedom. So XYZ in translation, XYZ in rotation. Now that we have arrested or mounting holes in all degrees of freedom, it is time to apply a bearing load on this plate, especially on this whole feature here. For that, going to go to home tab, bearing. As I mentioned already, since we are working with shell pairs, it just has a two dimensional element. We cannot choose a surface, we can just choose a edge. If we choose a surface, then that surface will be compressed to a particular edge and our load will not be taken by the solver. So we should keep in mind. Okay, I'll go to drop down, edges and curves. Click on this edge here. I'm going to apply 500 Newton on vertically upward direction. So this is how my bearing load would look like during lifting operation. So I click on OK. So now that I've applied my load, it is time for us to assign material to this model. So for assigning materials, I go to Home tab, Materials. Click on Standard Ferrous Materials. I'll choose a steel low carbon carbon steel and uh, it has populated in my model tree so you should also ensure that it is assigned to your model so for assigning a material you should choose components select on your assembly on the model tree steel low carbon okay so we have our constraints loads and the material and the connection between these two plates set so it is time for us to run our static analysis for start running a static analysis 
I am going to go to analysis and studies, file, new static, going to call this lifting analysis. My constraint and load set are checked in. I use single pass adaptive as my method to solve. Click OK. So I hit the green flag. Yes, I want interactive diagnostics. So since this is a simple model, it has completed uh, in a fairly quick time. So it says my analysis is complete. So now we can view the results. So for viewing the results, I close out of this, hit this button. First, we're going to look at the displacement, deformed 5%, animate, let's have 12 frames per second and have the elements viewed. So this is how the displacement looks like. As you can see, although we had a solid model that had a definite thickness, we have idealized this into a simpler problem by having a shell pair that is very thin. So in this model, you can assume that the thickness has been factored in as a mathematical parameter instead of a physical geometry. So this is how the displacement looks like. Let's stop this animation for a second. I'm going to copy this, go to stress. I'll say maximum between the top and the bottom and I'll have contributions from membrane bending and transverse shear. Units as MPA. Don't want it deformed, just the element edges. So this is how the stress part looks like. In case, if you want to adjust the legend, you could just go to format, click edit. Let's say zero to 20, click OK. So it will show you zero to 20. And the constraint locations seem to be slightly strained out because we have arrested it in all degrees of freedom. In case if you want to probe stresses anywhere in your model, you could just go to home tab, click on dynamic query. I'll just check off the show dynamic query location. So you can just point to any location and see what the stress is anywhere on the model. So based on the units you have set, it will give you respective values. So this is how you can click. If you want to clear the tags, you could just go to clear all tags and then you can also do it for displacement as well. So I'll go to dynamic query. So the displacement is fairly small for this analysis, but this is how you look at the displacement. If you don't want this coordinates to be visible, just check out the show dynamic query location and then click anywhere on the model. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box. I'll try to answer them. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.